Yeah. It's me, David. <laughs> David, what happened to your beard? I had to shave it. I have a lot of enemies after me, so I have to keep hiding. I see. I'll, I'll be quick then. I understand you recently hid in a cave, and one of your enemies almost found you. That's right. My men and I were hiding in the back of the cave, and King Saul, who wants me, walked in to use the restroom. That must have been a scary thing, knowing the man who wants to kill you and just, just a few feet away. I bet you were thinking about taking some revenge, right? David? David, where did he go? Oh, it's still me. Sorry, I had to change disguises again. Oh, um, well, sure told me. Sure. Well, see, I thought about revenge. I had been nothing but good to King Saul, and how does he repay me? By forcing me to go into hiding. My men told me, this is it, go ahead, you can get him. I snuck out and I cut a corner off of his robe, and then I immediately felt horrible about it. Isn't that incredible? He, and all he did was take a piece of the king's clothes, and he felt bad. Tell us, David. Uh, where did he go? David? Oh, it's still me. New disguise again. Um, isn't that incredible? Wow, that was really quick. Well, you see, I felt horrible because Saul was God's anointed king. I knew God had chosen him to be the king before me, and I was not about to hurt the king. So instead of taking re revenge, I decided to show love to my enemy. Isn't that incredible, ladies and gentlemen? But that's exactly what God wants from us. He wants us to love our enemies, and when people hurt us, he wants us to be kind in return. When we love those who hurt us, we become true witnesses of, for God. Just like, well, David, where did you go now? It's me, new disguise again. <sighs> that must be so exhausting, changing disguises all the time like that. It is, and my dog really hates it. Well, <laughs> gotta go. Okay, well, remember kids, show love to those who hurt us instead of taking revenge, and God will use you to love others. That's all for this week, kids, and I'm Jimmy Bond, and I'm going back under the cover. All right, well, that was an interesting story, wasn't it? Did you see Jimmy Bond? Yeah. 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 All right, well, let's let our kindergarten friends go off to their class this morning with Mr. Giffen and Miss Chloe. So, Porter and Elsie, do you want to head off to kindergarten? Yeah. All right, come on. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good that. So, as you might have guessed from our little skit, today we are talking a little bit about David. And a little bit about spies. Right? So spies, what do they always do? What is what is their job exactly? Noah? What do they see what other people are doing without with hiding? Yes. Not let other people see them? Exactly. They're trying to gain information, but let nobody see them and know who they are, right? So they spend a lot of time trying not to be seen, right? They can change disguises, they blend in, right? They might put on different coats or masks and just try and disappear. So today's Bible story is not really about a spy, but it's a man who spent many, many years trying not to be seen. He was trying to hide, and his name was David, as you might know, and he was anointed to be the next king. But the problem was, there was already a king. His name was King Saul. And King Saul had a son, and of course he wanted the kingship to go to him, his son, when he was gone. But God decided that David was going to be king next. And Saul wasn't too happy about that. So he spent a lot of time trying to hunt David down and get rid of David. So David just spends a lot of time running away. So we're going to jump into that Bible story. Um, it can be found in 1 Samuel 24. And I found a little video that reads through the Bible for you and adds a few pictures for you. So I'm going to play that so that you can hear it read. 
but essentially we're jumping into a scene where David is running, running, running. He happens to be hiding in a cave. And then King Saul heard that he was in that area, so he took like 3,000 men to go after David. 3,000 men, and they head to this place, and then King Saul has to use the restroom and goes into the cave where David is. And that's, we'll see what else happens. David refuses to get even. 1 Samuel 24. Saul learned that David had gone to the wilderness of En Gedi, so he chose 3,000 good soldiers and went after him. While Saul was in the wilderness, he stepped into a cave to go to the bathroom. He didn't know it was the same cave where David and his men were hiding. Kill him now, some of David's men whispered. But David would not kill a king God had chosen. Instead, David quietly came up behind Saul and cut off a piece of his robe. When Saul left the cave, David called, My Lord the King. Saul turned around and saw David. Look, David said, do you see this piece of robe in my hand? I could easily have killed you in the cave, but I didn't. Saul began to cry. You are a better person than I am, the king said. You could have killed me, but you didn't. Now I know that you will be king someday, but promise me that when you become king, you will not harm my family. David promised. Then Saul went home with his soldiers. David and his men went back into the cave. All right, so what did you hear? What happened? What? So the men were hiding and they cut off a piece of a rope from King Saul's robe and then they went up really high and showed the robe and then they made up a deal. Yeah, essentially, right? So David could have gotten rid of King Saul right there. Could have ended up. He was close enough to take a piece of his robe off. He could have easily done more than that. But David was a good guy and wasn't going to do that, right? He knew God had chosen Saul, so he was not going to get rid of King Saul, even though King Saul really wanted to get rid of David, right? So then David said, look, I could have gotten rid of you. I could have done it, but I didn't. And then King Saul realized, oh, David really is a good guy. He really trusts God, and he, I've been chasing him and trying to get rid of him for this long, and David just said, I'm not going to do it. And then King Saul realized that David had God in him and was not going to kill him anymore. And just asked, please don't kill my family. And as you might know, David and King Saul's son Jonathan were best buds. So David wasn't going to do that. But what does this mean for us? What does this mean for us? Well, Micah, you have an idea? Love your enemies. Love your enemies. You got it, right? And our enemies aren't always that obvious, right? Our enemies aren't always those people that are super mean to us. Sometimes they are, but not always. Sometimes sometimes they're just the people that don't say anything, that don't have any friends, right? And so we are children of God. And as children of God, it's our job to go out into our schools, into our neighborhoods, and to show God's love to everyone, even though they may not be kind to us, even though we might not know them, right? Our job is to show love to everyone, right? So, and yes, sometimes you might come across that child that is not very nice to you and bullies you or says mean things behind your back or turns your other friends against you or spreads lies about you, and you don't much like that person. However, hard as it is, instead of spreading rumors about that person or saying unkind things behind their back, our job is to share love. Our, God, our job is to use kindness, to spread kindness. So even if somebody is not very nice to us, instead of doing it back to them and getting even, our job is to do it differently, right? To share God's love, even when it's hard. And that might be something that's really hard to do, and it might start with just simply praying for that person. Because maybe you can't take that action right now because you're just so mad, right? So start by praying with them and asking God to change your heart towards them, towards how you feel about them, right? I know I heard a story about that once where there was someone he didn't much like this other person. They weren't very nice to him, and he just spent time praying for that person over and over and over and over. And eventually, 
they actually became friends because God softened their hearts towards each other and they were able to be friends instead of disliking each other or being mean to each other. So, today I just want to encourage you to set an example by paying back bad with good, right? Be God's children and share love and kindness with those around you and those who especially are not super kind to you. See if you can turn the tables and show kindness to them, or at least start by praying for them. All right, well, that's all I'm going to share today. So you can head off.